Yo, what's going on guys, it's your boy Poison Akami here, me and myself and I back at it again with another video and today's video is going to be the character guide for Naruto The Last. That's right, you guys have done a poll, or I did a poll, you guys filled it out. <laughs> yeah, so I did a poll and I asked you guys what character you want to see next and lo and behold, I had a feeling, just a slight feeling that you guys were going to go for the most meta relevant on the poll, which was Naruto The Last. I think out of the options that were PTS Shikamaru, Kiba, Neji Hyuga and Kabuto. <laughs> so, of course you guys are going to pick Naruto, and yeah, not many people picked Neji either. I think a lot of you just hate him. Anyways, let's get on with the uh, guide here. So, Naruto the last, arguably one of the stronger characters in the game, probably known to be the strongest Naruto out of all the different Narutos that are available in this game. Um, so let's get into it. So, he has a very good item set already, so he has two defense down tags, and then he has an attack uphill as well. So whenever the, both of these are active, you can imagine that the damage is going to be really big. Why do I have this one? There we go. So really big damage by the end of your combos. Just, that would just, you know, take so much as it is. Really, really good uh, character right there with the uh, items. So, and obviously, you got your paper bombs when you have strike back. So, you can throw these, they create distance, not only that, but obviously, you get strike back. So, make sure to do that when the storm gauge is active. Okay, so let's take a look at Naruto's combos. So, this is going to be probably a bit of a short segment because he has no infinites or anything. He is a very much, he's very similar to Asuma in terms of how he does his combos. It's a very like, it's like a boxing style, you know, the way he just boxes and just punches and like that. Obviously got a few kicks in there at the end, but really like none of his combos have anything in particular about it. So what you want to do is for good damage and to make sure you're not losing the combo is you want to do one, two, three circle hits, jump and chakra dash like so. One, two, three, jump, chakra dash. This is how you extend the combos without losing it if your opponent has no sub. Obviously jump and put a, kunai, uh, put a defense down tag in there and then just go from there. So, you know, defense down tag and go like that. And if you have the attack up pill as well, and the opponent has literally next to no subs at all, and the subs are going to take ages to come back, do something like this. Go to the next character, and then, uh, you know, go into your combo with them, and uh, make sure to get that extra damage with uh, Naruto's attack pill. Use Naruto's attack pill for other characters. To do this, you will need to know how to do combo switch tech like so. If you want to know how to do combo switch tech, I do recommend looking at the tutorial section of my YouTube channel. There you will see all the tutorials I've done on Naruto Storm for so far, and somewhere in there you will learn about different types of switch tech, combo switch tech being one of them. So have a dig through, take a look, watch the videos, and you will see what you are looking for. So in terms of like combos and max damage combos, that is pretty much what I could think of in terms of the reality of how you'd land them in a fight. In a fight, when you get into a situation where your opponents have no subs, you will see yourself doing this or this this is your main way of just getting consistent damage in if you do anything beyond that like the down combo you're forced to juggle them or you get forced into an air combo like such if you try to do it in an air and a neutral combo he jumps out the neutral combo late like so so it doesn't really work as well believe it or not he can actually block that so we won't even bother doing that and the up combo forces it into a juggle which is okay because he still hits his uh, things on a juggle that just means you have to do his IC3. So IC3 and then juggle that way. I think, yeah, if you do the up combo, you just lose them. So, you know, if you want to do a juggle, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure that you keep doing the IC3 to do your combo extensions. Okay, so let's take a look at his combos on block. I'm going to make this an actual segment for more characters because I feel like you guys should know when your characters are safe on block and when they're not safe on block as well. So, uh, with Naruto the last, with him, he is safe up to a point, is IC3, about there. When he does the little roundhouse kick, some characters like Mifune, uh, characters with fast tilts like Mifune and um, Toby, Great Ninja War Toby, I couldn't think of the name. It's Great Ninja War Toby, Mifune, anybody that has an literally instant tilt, someone like Storm Free Madara, you're good up until there. So two circle hits is where you're good. Anything after that, those type of characters can tilt out of there. Characters that have longer tilts, like, you know, Shikamaru, Shino, um, you know, Revolution Madara, Hashirama here, Neji, I don't know. Any character that you can think of that have slower tilts, you can, uh, oh, don't, don't do the air combo like that, but you can keep going into the IC3, so you can go IC3. And then you're safe to basically do up combo, jump, and then do Fuma Shuriken. So for some reason, some characters just can't get out of this at all. So this is actually, uh, if performed right, it can be a true uh, gel. So a lot of, you'll see a lot of uh, uh, pro players do up combo into the Fuma Shuriken like that. 
and the block stun is enough so that you can transition from the up combo to the Fuma Shuriken and then reset the combo again on the block. So make sure that you're doing that. And like I said, if you're going against characters like Great Ninja War Toby or um, Mifune, make sure that after IC2 that you just jump away like this. Either do like a little hollow step away like that, and then if it's just Great Ninja War Toby, you can wait and then chakra dash like that. Or if it's Mifune, you know, just do the IC2 versus Mifune like that and then just ninja move away because if you're playing someone like Mr. Air Force who plays Mifune, he will tilt right there in between the IC2 and the IC3 frames. So be absolutely careful of that. But in terms of that, um, in terms of guard pressure, like I said, for most characters, it's the up combo on block and stuff like that. Um, you can sometimes get away of just doing like a short hop like this, like as you can see. So it looks unsafe generally. I wouldn't really attempt it very much, but um, if you're able to get away by doing like, you know, real tiny ones, you know, a bit like that, then go ahead, but just know that your opponent can't either escape or counter it. So I wouldn't attempt that as much. When you want to go for like a legitimate guard break technique, you want to do up combo, jump, Fuma Shuriken, and then repeat again. That's basically your main, um, your main idea there. Okay, so let's take a look at Naruto's air combos as well. So with his air combos, um, oh yeah, the reason why I'm moving on to the air combos, not really going into the combos, is because none of them are, you know, anything good. Like with the neutral combo, the, the full neutral combo and blast him away. He can get straight back, which is good because it's set up for like other opportunities, but that's whatever. Down combo just grounds them, up combo launches them into the air. You know how they are generally with combos. Naruto has very basic combos, no infinites, nothing special whatsoever. However, the air combo is actually a little bit more interesting than the ground combos here. So, air combo fully looks like, oh, <laughs> that is not how it looks. Uh, fully looks like this. He does three uh, kicks and then ends it with a Rasen Shuriken to uh, ground them onto the ground. Um, if you slow down the techniques, you can actually perform a stun lock, similar to how you would with Sasuke the last character guide coming to. So, um, with the air combo, you can actually just slow down the hits like this, switch to the next character, and then go into it like that. Now, yeah, I just want to make sure the guard was on because I can't tell if it's on or not, but uh, I'll show you again. Make sure that you're not doing this brass and shuriken too fast, make sure you really delay the hits. This is something you have to practice. But, and if you do it too slow, then you can lose it. So the timing is very uh, strict, but as you can see, they stay locked. They touch your hand on the ground, they wait, and then they block. This is how you know that is a very good stun lock to do. And I do recommend doing this whenever you get the chance. I've actually tested it a little bit. This works in both 30 and 60 frames per second. Um, but you know, even when you're really high in the air, you can do it super high in the air. But just be careful that when you land on the ground, because of the height difference, they do have a higher chance of blocking because you have to wait for yourself to fall down as well. So if you're going to do a technique like this, you can just do this, chakra dash, and then, you know, do it about that height. You don't want to do it too high. Which is, that, that right there was a good height. And then you go into your combos and, you know, do whatever you want from there. So, yeah, that is pretty much uh, uh, what you can do with this air combo. So you can actually get a nice stun lock from it. But, yeah, that is pretty much it for the air combo right there. Um, if you have any questions about that or whatever, please be sure to ask in the, in the comment section below. But literally, it is just a very strict time window of just slowing down your attacks. Not too slow to the point where, you know, Naruto messes up, but not too fast to the point where he does the full air combo. So come into training mode right here. Practice it. Just keep practicing and eventually you should get it down. But, um, yeah, anyways, that is a good opportunity to lead on to further combos and it's a nice little reset opportunity in case you're ever mashing a lot and you catch them in the air, then it is very good for resetting onto the ground for a nice ground combo if your opponent has no subs. And I think I just thought of something like in the up combo, you can just do the up combo like this into like a jutsu like that. But other than that, there's nothing really like great or max damaging that you can do in Naruto's combo. Obviously with the strike back active like so, There we go, you can do that into strike back as well. And you know, go into whatever combo after that as well. But yeah, so let's move on to Naruto's grab. Let's take a look at that. So the grab, again, he's a very basic generic character in terms of like his assets. Grab's great, got a very nice cinematic on it. Grounds him right in front of you. So then you can do an okay like wake up setup, you know, just get some guard pressure or bait a counter, do whatever you want. Get, Force mind games on them. It allows you to get close and force mind games on them right from the get go. You know, chase them, you know, where they're rolling like that. Just follow up and just pressure them. But other than that, I don't really have much else to say on the grab. In terms of wanting to land the grab, um, obviously you can do an aggressive approach like that. It has a very fast start up. 
So against defensive opponents, I do it all the time when they wake up, and I do it to them wake up like this, because Naruto is very fast on it. So again, just do like stuff like that, very quick, very fast. Um, you know, just practice. It might be worth practicing that just to force them wake up, and obviously force the opponent to change the way that they play. Um, but yeah, other than that, the grab is very basic, and I do not have much else to say about it. Um, it is a very basic grab that just doesn't lead for any. It doesn't bounce the opponent. It doesn't give anything for you to lead off of or to, for you to, you know. Uh, convert into anything so we'll end that segment there uh, if you do have any questions about the grab or anything or if, you if anybody knows anything about the grab then please be sure to put down in the comment section below and let's teach each other and then in terms of Naruto's tilt again another very basic tilt but it works in in a couple of different ways so the general way that for the tilt to work is that he sends out a clone it adds a hit like so and then you can uh, continue a combo of it like that so basically all you're doing is you're approaching the opponent and you're adding one extra hit to a combo that you already do um, but technically you still have control of the very last you know the first this Naruto here as soon as you do the tilt if you oh, let me do that if you don't press anything he the the new clone vanishes and Naruto stays where he is if you decide to continue the combo Naruto will then go to the clone and then the clone is now who you're playing as and then you can just keep doing the same like so so that's a decision on where if you want to you know do that uh you know create distance or whatever but you know i usually use it as like an approach thing like that um obviously it doesn't really happen on open opponents so a realistic scenario is sometimes i do that i stop and then i just do that go into my guard pressure like so and not a lot of people expect to tilt like that from a range again it's a mind games thing so if you want to like play mind games on your opponent Approaching with a tilt like that, you know, do that, you know, do a bit of this and then do something like that against like a scared opponent who's blocking a lot. You may, you might find, you might find yourself, you know, really, um, you know, su surprising yourself. Not only that, but hollow stepping shuriken like that as well, uh, it really helps as well. It's like a little stylish thing that I do, but it actually catches people because when people see, um, when people see the, st the stylish um, hollow step shuriken like this, they don't expect the tilt, so they release a block and then get hit by the tilt. I do this with a lot of characters and it surprisingly works half the time. Um, so yeah, if you want to know how to hold us up, again, tutorial section on the on channel, go to that, you'll find what you're looking for there. But in terms of the tilt, there's nothing really else. All it is, is just an introduction to Naruto's combos. That's pretty much it. As I've said, Naruto has a very basic and very simple moveset, but the reason why it's so useful is because he has outstanding qualities such as great guard pressure against regular characters. Regular characters cannot tilt through this. Not only that, but he's just got really good assets, you know, and then obviously let's move to his ninjutsu. So we're talking about why Naruto is as good as he is, is because of his ninjutsu. So his jutsu is good when it's on hit as well as when it's uh, not on hit, so when it's on block. So obviously on block, you can switch check it like that and use it to approach to continue your guard pressure like so and do some amazing guard pressure like this, open up your opponent and whatever. So it's good for that. So it's good to run alongside the uh, jutsu like this. Like I always say in my coaching videos, make sure to run alongside jutsus like so. Run with them and they can give you opportunities to do guard break combos like such. So be sure to do that. And then another um, thing about the jutsu is that you can charge it like so. Uh, as you can see, it does quite a lot. Now the tracking of these things ain't great. So if you were to sidestep, you can sidestep the, the clones really easily. The tracking on them is not very good. It's nothing like Sasuke's Chidori, for example. Um, but uh, the clones are pretty good. And then on hit, it does knockback like so, which is really good as well. Uh, you only get the chance to really hit one before like the others can get to hit it, um, which is a shame because obviously strike back. But I'm pretty sure when um, there's no strike back active or whatever, Oh no, you only do get one hit by one. For some reason, I thought in my head that you can get hit by all of them, but you can't. Um, so yeah, you just get hit by the one, and then you want this when you have strike back, obviously, because when you have strike back, obviously it leads you to go to other combos like this, and then, you know, go to your other stuff. So yeah, you can do stuff like that as well. Uh, but in terms of the jutsu, it is really powerful, but... Obviously, it's really powerful because it stops chakra dashing opponents. So if you were to chakra dash me, he would get foiled by it. He would get destroyed by it. So it's good for shutting down aggressive players. However, it does lack priority in the Jitsu department. 
So with Jitsus, it doesn't have, it's the same as Hinata's Jitsu in terms of, I mean Hinata's Air Palm Jitsu, in terms of it gets cancelled out by other Jitsus, other projectile Jitsus more so. So, as you can see, both my clones got destroyed by the dragon. Now the reason why the dragon didn't hit me is because the tracking messed up and it missed. But, I'm gonna just wait for Hashirama to do it again, just so I can show it. As you can see there, I had to sub the dragon and hit, and my clones got destroyed by the dragon. So no matter how many clones I throw at it, they will just get destroyed by his wooden dragon. So be sure to keep this in mind. This also goes for like um, fireballs as well and things like that. So just be careful not to uh, use that against those type of jitsu. But that is pretty much it in terms of Naruto's last, um, his, the, 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 the reasons what makes him so high up on the tier list is because he's got a very good and annoying jitsu. It's great for wake up pressure and general pressure. And then his combos are very pressurizing on block. Okay, so now because we looked at his basic things and everything, let's go on to his awakening mode. Sadly, Naruto's awakening mode isn't great. <laughs> so, his awakening mode is very basic, it's got no com no, no uh, influence or anything. I've went through and tested, you know, they're all, all the hits, you know, they're all very, like, short stunned. You know, no matter what I do, it's just not a lot of stun or anything like that. Um, he's got a very generic um, jutsu as well. Shoots a tail beast bomb, doesn't travel very fast, the tracking probably isn't very good either. His tilt, obviously, he throws uh, these planetary little Rasengans or whatever, Rasen Shurikens. No matter how much you mash the circle button, it doesn't really do much damage or, you know, it doesn't... I mean, the damage is decent. But when you uh, hit a circle or whatever, it doesn't really do anything else. It's a one-hit thing. And then his grab is the same as all of his other awakening grabs. It's just very simple. It's just this one just grounds them. Other than that, his combos are very generic. Got the one ground combo that... Uh, sorry, one air combo that grounds them as well, sorry. And, uh, yeah, he's got different... He's got up combos and stuff. He's got down combo as well. So, you know, that's all different... But um, one thing you can do is actually do a forced landing frames combo or guard manipulation combo, I like to call it. Like so. Oh, wait, yes, it actually, it actually has to be blocking. Hold on. So do it like this. Like so. So just jump Ninja Me forward, throw Chakra Shuriken like that. And then you can reset like that. Get into a combo or whatever. Um, maybe you might be able to land his uh, Jutsu from it as well, let's just see. Yeah, so you can do that as well. But other than that, the, the Awakening is just good just for, you know, doing switch tech Jutsu. Just running with the Jutsu like that. And just running alongside of it, causing, and you know, pressure and shit like that. So that is pretty much the main purpose for Naruto's Awakening. Not really a great Awakening, not one of the best Awakenings in the game. And this Naruto is mainly used for his base form. So in overall conclusion, Naruto The Last is a very basic and very general, generalized character. It's the very basics of what the Storm 4 moveset would have. However, it is the, the basics of it that makes it so good. It's the fact that he has little to no gaps in his combos and the speed of them is what makes it so good. It's the fact he has a very pressurizing uh, jutsu like this for you to follow up on as well. That, you know, that makes him so good. He, this Naruto is a nice little supporting character in high level fights very good support usage and very good support to your pressurizing characters such as Pain here to create extra damage and extra like bad situations for your opponent. But yeah, a team that I like to use is actually PTS Shino, Naruto and Pain together because I like using PTS Shino with two strike backs. I feel like there's a lot of damage potential and Naruto at last is a really good fit for Shino's pressure and combo pressure. I really just complement Shino and Pain together. I feel like these three are a very nice aggressive team that I can use. But anyways, that is basically it for Naruto at last. That is basically why he's a good character. And if you do not use Naruto at last, this is all the reasons as to why you should use him. If you need any more reference, I recommend going looking at very top level, high level first of fives in gameplay and you will see Naruto the last does get used quite often and he's a very, very strong character. Anyways, as always, it's been a boy poison to come me. Matane.